Hyundai Motor India is gearing up for the biggest IPO in Indian history. In fact, after decades, a global automotive company is being listed on the Indian capital markets. It's a momentous event which is being observed the world around. And talking to me on this uh, occasion and in the, and Hyundai's new India journey, we have Mr. Unsu Kim, the Managing Director of Hyundai Motor India, and Tarun Gal, who is the Chief Operating Officer and Whole Time Executive Director. Uh, thanks so much for joining. Uh, Mr. Kim, uh, first question is, why the IPO? Because uh, clearly, uh, you know, uh, Hyundai is one of the few companies that's doing pretty well in India. Really don't need external uh, external funds in that sense. So what is the rationale of going to the capital markets uh, for funding? Is it because, uh, you know, future development in certain powertrains in this transition is going to be very capital intensive? Uh, it's a very good and a fundamental question. Uh, uh, India is the most, one of the most exciting auto market in the world and the HMI uh, has been successful for 26 years and uh, is the second large the passenger vehicle OEM in India. So I believe uh, it is the right time to take a step forward to further Indianize our operation in India. And uh, we will continue to pursue the global standard and the practices in terms of governance. IPO will ensure uh, that we will uh, even more dedicated to the success in India. Uh, and uh, additionally, the IPO will the, provide the, uh, some opportunity for local and the global investors to take part in the, our growth story. That is the, the, our perspective. Right. right. But, uh, you know, uh, by raising uh, this money and going to the external, where, where is the investment largely going to go? Is it going to be in products, technology? Now, I know you're investing in capacity as well, which you have done in Taliga. Where is the investment going to go? Because there's also a transition from ICE to EV. Uh, OEMs have to invest simultaneously in all the technologies also, which is very capital intensive. So what is your view that, you know, where do you think, a lot of your investment is going to go, uh, you know, in in the next uh, couple of years. In, in terms of uh, proceeds from the, this IPO, the HMC will decide the details. However, uh, in a broad level, the HMC will invest aggressively uh, in new car product, future advanced technology, and uh, R and D capability for Hyundai Motor India Limited. Right, and you know. Uh, uh, just sticking with power days because clearly this is really the big issue with uh, OEMs right now. Uh, I think everyone has realized you can't look at one power train, it's a multiple power train. So, uh, you know, I just wanted your thoughts on the EV penetration. Uh, where do you think that will be in 2030? What will Hyundai's penetration be in 2030? Uh, and even on, on hybrids, uh, because clearly there's a lot of talk around that. Are you looking at that as well? And, and Tarun, I'd like your views on, you know, let's say, uh, on, on the Indian scenario with CNG, biofuels, which is also going to happen. The I would say uh, India is the early, in the early stage of electrification. Uh, India EV market is expected to grow strongly by 2030, uh, led by government strong initiative and uh, uh, many OEMs, the uh, EV focuses. HMI has a strong access to the uh, HMC, the global uh, EV and the battery technologies. So uh, we are developing an EV ecosystem in India. Uh, we are planning to launch four EV models uh, across the mass and the premium segment, including our Creta EV, a Q4 this financial year. And also, we are localized uh, supply chain, uh, including the battery pack, driver train, and the battery cell, etc. Also, we are investing uh, EV charging infrastructure. So, right. But uh, just sticking with EVs in a, uh, on uh, on the hybrid side, mm. are you going to be investing in hybrid batteries also at some point? Because right now, I think with Excite, it's only with uh, batteries for the BEBS. So, is there a hybrid battery also investment? Uh, uh, you think there's this? Uh, you would be looking at that. 
Uh, I'd like to say that uh, in terms of the hybrid, uh, HMI has always been ahead of the curve to meet the customer preferences or a market demand. HMC has uh, various powertrain technologies like the uh, EV hybrid and the plane hybrid, even the hydrogen. So uh, HMI uh, could leverage the HMC capability to launch that kind of a powertrain in the market in the short period of time. Right. You can leverage this engine. Yeah, absolutely. Like I said, we study the market consumer uh, demand very, very closely. And uh, and whenever whenever we see the opportunity, we will we will we will do the need for. We have seen in the past that uh, we have always been ahead of the curve, and we'll continue to do that. And regarding your CNG, if you see CNG is a very integral part of our strategy. Yeah. Because and the entry level customer is very very price sensitive, and we are offering CNG in the Neos, in the Aura, in the Exter. In fact, in Aura, the CNG penetration has reached eighty five percent. In the Exter, we launched the dual CNG, dual cylinder CNG, and it has received some great response. In fact, the penetration in early indications of penetration are that it has increased from 17% to 22% to 25% now. So very, very strong. And we believe that at the entry level, CNG will be a very good option. In the SUV space, petrol and diesel look uh, really, really very good because customers are very, very, they don't want to compromise on any initial talk. And that is where it comes in. Uh, EVs, MD already talked about. So I think we are kind of technology agnostic and that really help us to really navigate, uh, you know, the future challenges as well. Uh, 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 Tarun, just looking forward, you know, there's another kind of, uh, let's say, twist coming in the form of biofuels. You know, there's talk of E20 and then finally going to E85. Uh, again, that's quite a challenge. So, you know, again, coming to my point, there's so much investment to be done in uh, so many technologies. So just your thoughts on, you know, let's say, because it's a very Indian context, uh, looking at biofuels, I think there's a push because we want import substitution. Uh, you know, our our import bill for oil is going through the roof and it's being driven largely by that. How prepared are you all, uh, you know, for this? Because uh, it is it is a big challenge. I mean, uh, engines have to be recalibrated, re-engineered, uh, not something that's going to be easy. Look, what I would say again is like HMC has all kinds of technology, including including the biofuel, if you see in Brazil. Right. You know, so that is the advantage of being, uh, uh, you know, having a, such a parent who is really, really investing in all future technologies. So I think that is a very important thing. So to that extent, what we can do is relatively it would be it could be faster. So as and when we feel that, yes, the market is ready for it, we can do it at a much faster uh, rate and of course at a lower cost as well because it, it doesn't have to be based up because already that technology has been invested in. Right. Uh, 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 Kim, I just want to talk on R&D. You know, uh, clearly... Uh, I would imagine that a lot more investment in R&D will come, uh, you know, going forward. Uh, but still, there's a lot more that can be done in India. I mean, is the long-term goal to design and develop products in India for the Indian market to really have a local R&D in terms of everything, you know, even the sourcing, uh, the design, development, to make it uh, truly uh, Indianized in terms of even the products coming out of here? Uh, yes, the... HMC is a centralized R&D center in Korea, uh, along with the uh, overseas R&D center like the India, the Hyderabad. We have the Hyderabad R&D center. Uh, HMC R&D center is majorly focusing on the powertrain, uh, the platform structure, and the new car development. Uh, whereas the, our Indian the R&D center is a more focusing on the uh, some customized that kind of technology to meet the Indian local taste, local design, and the local specific quality issues. And then uh, we are planning to expand our R&D capability in Hyderabad uh, to uh, develop more uh, in that specific models. Right. And, uh, uh, you know, just uh, uh, going forward, uh, you know, just looking at uh, ICE, looks like India is going to be a long road ahead of ICE. So do you think there will be more investment in ICE as well? Because a lot of companies are not looking at ICE and, you know, going straight for EV. So just wanted your thought on, uh, you know, the ICE uh, kind of strategy going forward. Uh, normally, it is not easy to forecast the future exactly. Right. Uh, there are a lot of uh, fluctuations there, uncertainties out there. 
Uh, one of our DNA is to have uh, some strong ability to rapidly respond and uh, quickly the adapt to the uh, some transformation of uh, the industry, like uh, some evolution of technology or uh, changes in the government policy or geopolitics. So uh, we will respond very quickly, and it depends on the, some customers' preferences or government policy or global trend. Yeah. Right. So what you're saying is the R&D will let you respond much more quickly to uh, uh, market trends over here. But uh, just a follow-up question on that, you know, sometimes going public and going listed, there are a lot more compliances, there are a lot more processes. Uh, do you think that could actually might slow your decision-making process down? I mean, uh, you know, Tarun, I, I toss this to you because, uh, uh, you know, I think there's a different kind of protocols now to follow when you're, you know, you're listed. Well, there are two things to it. First is, of course, we have always been very, very strong in terms of corporate governance, all, you know, related party transactions in terms of arm's length basis. So we have absolutely maintained the top levels of governance. Now, of course, with, with, with being listed, one, the independent directors come in. We and we have a very, very reputed set of independent directors. If you see our board today, it has Indian, majority Indians, it has Korean, it has a British, uh, uh, you know, a British as well. So very, very multinational, which will really keep, a, especially the independent directors will keep an eye on our operations. Also, I think this is an opportunity. It is an opportunity to really see and pursue the global standards because now we are listed. So the communication will be much better which will really keep us even more on the, uh, you know, uh, on the toes, right. which is very good, which will help. I, I, frankly, to me, it's a huge opportunity to further raise the level up. Right. Uh, well, I, I think uh, absolutely. I mean, we look forward to more communication. So uh, knowing uh, and maybe sometimes even a bit of your future plans when you can say. <laughs> so, but, uh, uh, you know, just last uh, couple of questions. One is uh, looking at where you've been right now, you know, maybe 16, 17% market share. Uh, you, to be honest, been uh, around whatever, 50, 60,000, let's put it in that range. Uh, you've got certain other local OEMs also having grown, snapping at your heels. Is this the time also you feel to now put your foot on the accelerator and kind of, let's say, increase overall, uh, let's say, volume and penetration of the market? Clearly, you're not in some of the volume segments that allow you to do that. So just wanted to get your sense on, you know, let's say, increasing volumes and market share going forward. Look, uh, if you see our history, we have always grown, you know. I think we have one company which has really grown, reached at this level of 7.5 to 8, eight lakh uh, vehicles. We have focused on domestic as well as exports. One big thing which is happening in the near future is the Pune plant, right. which will add our capacity by 30%. I think this will give a lot of headroom, uh, both in the domestic as well as in the export market. The second big thing is the EV. Because right now we were still in the niche segment. But now with the Creta EV and three more EVs coming in, we will have an opportunity to have grab a good market share even in the EV space. So I think there are a lot of opportunities to really look forward to. Also, if you see the general landscape, it is moving towards premiumization. It is moving towards software-defined vehicles. Infotainment is becoming right. more and more important. I believe with HMC strong capabilities in these areas and R&D focus will really make us even more uh, competitive to really, really navigate and, and, and further leverage all the opportunities that are now coming up with them. No, you raise a good point on the software and software-defined vehicles. And clearly, you know, uh, I mean, we are big fans of the EGMP platform. Uh, Ionic 5 was our car of the year also. So just to understand, is also software going to be one of the key differentiators going forward? Because clearly, uh, you know, when you go for electrification, uh, everything is digital. Um, we're going into an ADAS world. Do you think software is one of the things where uh, uh, um, Hyundai will be having an edge over some of its competition? Absolutely. Absolutely. If you see, we started with connected cars with Venue 2019. That that year, the penetration was 5%. We have already have now connectivity 11 out of our 13 models and with a penetration of 30%. We introduced AG, uh, ADAS uh, of, uh, three years back. Today, 8 out of our 13 models have ADAS. In those models, the penetration has reached almost 29%. So very clearly, you can see that there, there are opportunities coming up. With the more and more highways coming in, the high speed on those highways increase, and that gave us an opening for the ADAS. So you can see going forward, infotainment is becoming very, very important. Uh, probably things like in-car payment. So I think 
the uh, opportunities are plenty and there are two things which differentiate hyundai from the other companies one is like i said r&d capability the second is success in the developed markets right like us europe korea that gives us access to the early trends and typically we have seen that it will come to india but maybe with some kind of a lag so i think that learning is also very very useful which is very very unique to hyundai So just coming back, is is software going to be one of the areas of uh, key areas of investment? I mean, could you? Uh... <laughs> Can you hear? You have uh, look. Is the point is that yes, software is becoming more and more important. And I cannot say that okay, investment here, investment in A, investment in B. But yes, software is becoming more and more important. There are no two ways about it. And we believe with our uh, HMC's R and D capabilities in this area is an edge for us. Right. And uh, last question, Mr. Kim. You know, once all your expansion plans are set uh, taligaon is there uh, want to talk to you on the export potential out of india what do you see that i mean uh, you know domestic versus export uh, what can we expect uh, you know from the overall expansion and production footprint that you will have in india uh, currently the we are the second largest exporter and uh, largest exporter on a cumulative basis currently we have the uh, around uh, a like the capacity in the chennai so we the we are seeing the domestic and export uh, demand is increasing so to meet post uh, demand uh, we acquired the talegon plant uh, after operation of the talegon plant our capacity will reach the 1.1 million uh, definitely this capacity will meet both the domestic and the export volumes so we have healthy the uh, mix of domestic and export Uh, which gave us not only profit but also uh, uh, gave us the natural hedge against the some uh, market fluctuation under the current uh, geopolitical context. Right, and exports, I would imagine, are slightly more profitable business than uh, domestic, uh, uh, the domestic market as well. Uh, I cannot specify at this moment. Uh, uh, I'm aware for every yeah. typically exports normally there's more margin on exports uh, you know uh, it's uh, because domestic market we know there are the structure of the market is uh, high volume low margin market exports gives you that little bit more uh, margin so i was just coming uh, uh, alluding to that yeah, I, i like to say that uh, uh, hmi that we are uh, positioning hmi as a production hub for emerging market and right. uh, middle east africa south asia or uh, central and uh, south america Uh, we are manufacturing and exporting cost optimized our vehicle to the more than 80 countries our product lineup is a very suitable for emerging market right so you're going to so, be focusing on the emerging market yes yes absolutely yeah. well thank you gentlemen and uh, uh, congratulations uh, wish you all the best uh, i'm sure this is a new chapter in uh, hyundai motor india where it is becoming more and more uh, indian and uh, wish you all the best Uh, thank, thank you so much, Raj. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.